Hey, Foot Clan. We like to think of ourselves as the podcast that turns players into champions. Now, I want to tell you about the app that turns fantasy players into champions, and that is the free Sports Manias app with the brand new smack talking emojis that have been added in this week. You can import your fantasy teams, get breakdowns on your players, alerts on scoring opportunities, and it's all free. So make sure you grab it. It's the app we recommend to everybody. The free Sports Manias app. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh my goodness, we are back. It is Thursday, October 29th, and this is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, and I am... We're all a little bit distracted here. Yes. Yeah. Because, yeah. well, there's a trade deadline taking place. In 10 minutes. Basically right now in our, our kind of our big boy league of record uh, where where it's a three-man keeper league and so draft pick trading happens. And you're probably saying to yourself right now, what in the world? Why is your trade deadline this soon? Well, it's because of the keepers and the picks and the fact we don't want teams, basically. We wanted them to make a decision early in the season on whether or not they thought they could compete. Yeah, no no tanking in week 10. Yeah, and, yeah and that's pretty much We why. have found, for all those leagues that are out there that, that deal with those problems, we have found that the earlier trade deadline is pretty much the best solution to allow you to still trade picks into the future, still be able to do things, but not have it to where you have super power teams and super garbage teams because everybody has either bought in or sold the farm. Yeah, so that's taking place momentarily. You know, I'm I'm happy with my team. I'm not doing anything. How about you, Jason? I am super happy with my team, but it is it is so deep, so solid. I lead the league in points, but it is missing one of those absolute top tip top pieces it's missing a Gronk it's missing a Julio it's missing a Le'Veon Bell those type of pieces I don't have one of those guys I'm hoping Alshon Jeffrey can be that I love my lineup the depth is great and I'm I'm happy I've got more depth this year since we've got the earlier trade deadline because I think that might come into play as the season goes on that's fair and the the I right, we're, we're we still got the digital farts that was that was more like a snowstorm. I felt like we have had some requests to allow that. that I can promise you this will probably be probably be the last time you ever hear that. Yeah, we got it. We got to upgrade some equipment. So what I am looking at on my team for I have uh, basically five minutes to make this decision. Ooh, uh, ooh. I am so I'm in. I am completely in on this year. Uh, and sitting at four and three. Sitting at four and three, so and know. I have to make a decision of whether to hold or these are these are th some things that I can do. I have both Travis Kelsey and Jordan Reed on my bench uh, or on my roster. So you don't start a say. tight end. That's good. Cool. The, uh, <laughs> no, I'm right. Just kidding. So, and Travis Kelsey, while he's not been bad by any stretch of the imagination, he's still the number four tight end in our format, but he's just not scoring touchdowns. Alex Smith has been horrific at finding anybody who is not his first read. And uh, so, do I believe, do I trade him? Do I believe that he uh, stays at this mediocre level? or And then there's the Jordan Reed of when healthy, he's averaging basically Gronkian-type numbers. And that sounds like a, a heretic things to, thing to say. Let, but me, look, let, me I tell you, let me tell you your answer real quick since we're in the league with you. Please trade Travis Kelsey and hold on to Jordan Reed for the That's rest of the year. The question of, yeah, of Reed, Reed is a complete – injury risk but when he plays is he's a difference making tight end is what he's saying yeah and i've told people that this week when they asked me about their tight ends jordan reed might be the number two tight end when he's healthy which sounds insane but it really might be the case and i completely agree with that statement which is why i'm looking at a situation of well if i'm not blown away by an offer to make another team better while making my team worse when i want to keep win, them both yeah so um, that's what i'm looking at and i keep telling them uh, you, it's not that your offer is is not fair because that's a, that's a very interesting thing that maybe we can talk about uh, in the off season well, or whatever. Just the value of a player, and I keep telling them the value of a player is what you're willing to pay me and what I'm willing to sell it at. I don't care what the market says. 
Yeah, we've we've received a lot. We'll, we'll talk about this in the quick question, but we've received a lot of emails going, oh, is this is this trade vetoable? So we'll talk about that and what makes a trade vetoable and some of the ins and outs of that. We got a good show. It's going to be jam packed. It'll probably be a longer show. So, you know, drive around the block a couple of times on the way home <laughs> on the way home from Park work it today. In the driveway. Uh, we've got. We've got some updates for you from the fantasy world. We've got our fantasy forecast, so we're going to talk about the kind of the Thursday night game, which is tonight, which is great. I can't wait. And then uh, the rest of the first half of the games. And we got our starts of the week today. Yeah. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Find us on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com. And listen, I think there's, I think there's still time. There probably won't be though. When uh, I guess when this podcast comes out for the shirts. Uh, is it gonna yeah. be? Is it gonna be over by the time this publishes? Uh, I, yeah, I think I, pretty much when you're listening, the shirts. Okay. Are done. I have However, no. I have no. We're gonna we're gonna time. throw up some, some different shirts today because yeah, people have been asking for months and we just haven't done it yet. Yeah, people wanted the regular fantasy footballers logo shirt, and I think we're gonna finally finally do it. Yeah, I put. I it's it's ready to go. You'll see the link. It'll be up there, and I I put like a billion color options in there too. So Michael really appreciate that. I do. So. I do. Although. Uh, for me and Mike have a little bit of a, a black shirt, white shirt competition. Yes. Like I like black shirts. He likes white shirts. And when we sold the, the Marty McFly shirts, or I'm sorry, the, you know, the back to the future style logos, there were no white shirts sold. Not so the true. world, one. the that, world that is, unites with me. Well, th- this is, this is a very small sample size as they would say. <laughs> and for the next one, we will put the default in white. So that's what people uh, see immediately. No, we won't. Not if yeah, we sold zero white that's shirts. That's what I was just thinking. The marketing department has, has vetoed that. Well, that's fine. If you don't want to, if you don't want to get a, an accurate uh, market, or I'll, I'll just size, let you win that, and then we'll sell more shirts. Victory! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, quick question for the day. Uh, we've been asked a lot about this. Let's talk about collusion in leagues. How did it to identify collusion? What to do with it? What makes a trade vetoable? That general discussion. That's not even one question, but just I, I want to bring up that discussion. So, any any quick thoughts? Uh, I had a a a question on Twitter today, and they were asking me, uh, "Is this collusion?" So there is a a team in first place carrying two tight ends. Tight ends are very hard to find in this league, okay. and they have they were looking to get rid of Walker, uh, Delaney Walker. Yeah, and. There was so he clearly this team did not want to drop them because the other top team is in desperate need of a tight end. So strategically, it doesn't make sense for this person to just drop Walker so that person can claim him and blah blah blah. So this the the person the owner of Walker traded Walker away to a team for a kicker and then dropped the kicker. So essentially, to open a spot and then keep Walker gave Walker away for free to another team, but but uh, did not give the other top team a chance at uh, getting Walker off the waiver wire. And they said, "Is this collusion?" And I said, "It's only collusion when they collude. If, if both parties yep. know exactly what is going on. If not, that guy just made an extremely crafty move." I agree with that. I completely so agree I said, with you. There's no way you veto or reverse that. No. And we're, actually we're, I almost think every in general we are we're not veto people, right? I would Yeah. Well, I know you've got some bitterness about There's last year. There's one veto that happened last but year. But in we're general, not... the three of us, we generally are you don't veto trades. Yeah, big boy. Put on your big bad. boy pants. Put on your big boy pants, play in a league with big boy People guys. make good trades. People make bad trades. And that bad. is not a reason to veto a trade. And very frequently, a trade that you think is the worst thing in the world in two weeks makes you look like an idiot because exactly. it was great. Yep. Yeah, I use the example all the time. Last year, Jason picked up Kyrie Robinson, and he gave up Justin Forsett, and the league mocked the guy who got Forsett the entire day, and we thought it was ridiculous, and it was clearly <laughs> a, a win for that guy. So, yeah, in general, the only way I like to veto is if it is in an, a league integrity type of an issue, which most often means collusion only. If two owners are conspiring to make one team better or another team worse, and it's a discussion in that context. It's not, I'm going to make a trade to benefit my team. You're going to make a trade to benefit your team. Whether or not they value things the same way, that doesn't make it worth vetoing. Agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into the news and notes. News and notes from around the league. 
Some, All right. Someday we will talk about the Drew Brees, Adrian Peterson trade that was vetoed. Not and, today. I no. thought I thought through it a little bit I'm in my head during it. that discussion, and it was it's you know it's on the line, and there, just, for reasons that we won't talk about right now. Yeah. This All right. Someday. Yeah. This has to do with Mike Mike's championship run, and he feels like the trade was validated because he won the chi- title, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I I won because it was vetoed. Yeah, right. if, if he had made the trade that he wanted to make, <laughs> he which wouldn't have the won league the title. vetoed. Right. Well, yeah, he wouldn't have. Won yeah, the title. you can't follow the ping pong balls all the way down. No, oh, we can and we yes, do. Yes, you can. Uh, Carlos Hyde did not practice. Should play. Jim Tom Sula says so. I think that's going to be a recurring theme the rest of the year. I was really excited as a Chris Ivory owner yesterday. They said he didn't practice at all, and then later in the day they said he practiced in full and is fine to play against those, Oakland. Those are quite so, different things. The latter is the reality, and that made me happy. Well, uh, it was also <clears throat> it was his hamstring injury. Then it was a quad injury, and then it was a hamstring injury. Yeah, I know misinformation there. And by the way, if you watch the game, uh, based on my knowledge of human anatomy, they were working out his hamstring in the game. <laughs> and so that if you know, that's good for Ivory owners, I guess, that he's hurting something else because the quad at least isn't re-injured. I don't know. All right, uh, Dion Lewis is questionable for tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, do you guys think he plays tonight? Because we got to give give this report today on the basis of uh, you know we don't get another chance tomorrow. The hilarious thing yesterday was uh, when Belichick was being asked about Ivory status or uh, Lewis's status. It, it, so this was yesterday. He said, "Well, we'll find out tomorrow if he can play." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Uh, you know, being the Thursday game, there's good good news and bad news. It gives you a lot of time to replace him if he's pulled out, but it's also more of a an inclination to sit a guy because you you get a shorter week, and if you sit him then, then you get an extra amount of time for the following week. So I don't have any insight on whether he'll play, but you have to follow it, get him out of your lineup. If he's playing, I have him ranked very highly. He was almost going to be my start of the week. But I couldn't make him my start of the week in good conscience, not knowing if he's going to start this week. So, okay, yeah, I, if he's playing, I'm starting him. Uh, Gates not practicing, not looking good. Well, the MCL is a big part of his game. Well, <laughs> <clears throat> tis true. Do you start? <laughs> That'll be the gift that keeps on giving. Let me let me ask you two quick questions. Going back to Lewis, is there any chance you would sign and start James White if Lewis was out? If you are desperate, then yeah, I I think so. The Miami, uh, if there is a strength to their defense, it's it's supposed to be the front line. Their secondary has been uh, highly suspect for quite some time, and it still is, in my opinion. Uh, and in the front, you got Sue, you got Cameron Wake, you got some serious guys up front. So, and the Patriots, if they uh, they see a strength, a weakness that's what they attack like they did last week where Garrett Blunt got basically no work because the Jets are a great run defense all right Marcus Mariota was going through drills yesterday we need to monitor him and we'll give you an update on him tomorrow whether he'll play Austin Severian Jenkins was back at practice but the reports today say that it's not he's not where he needs to be in his shoulder recovery so I don't expect him to play but he might be a stash for a tight end needy team Jeremy Macklin's back at practice. I expect him to be back out there the this Mac week. The Mac is back. Yeah, the Mac is back. He's got a great matchup as well. So if he does. He's, if he's playing, you fire him with full confidence. And then this broke yesterday or today that uh, the NFL has determined Joseph Randall has violated the personal conduct policy during a domestic incident Kristen in February. Michael. <laughs> Don't yes. ever <laughs> sing that. Please. Uh, please continue to chase you know, the, the dragon. Uh, if you're going to sing it, make sure it lets us down like Christine Michael. Christine Michael. There we go. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not the best news for Joseph Randall owners. Not the most unexpected when you are an underwear burglar, though. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely... You combine the injury with his league uh, punishment coming, and you can see that... Michael might need to be a little bit more involved, but also that they're doing the right thing in putting Darren McFadden. So as Darren the McFadden back. He looks is, like he, he could be real good. He might or might not just from opportunity be one of the three of ours start of the week. Stay tuned. Spoiler alert. He oh, is. And but- real, real quick too. I want to, uh, before we get into the forecast, we like to, we forgot to do this on Tuesday or, or didn't have time for it, but we like to read a review from the listeners. We really appreciate the iTunes reviews and the way you support the show. And so we want to take a second and read a review today. 
Review a Saurus Rex. This one comes in from Brian. Five stars. Trying to sit here and think what I'd have to do to get my review read on the show. Would I have to mention double stuffed Oreos? Too obvious. Quesaritos? Too obscure. Compliment the golden vocal stylings of our daily mail bag. Yeah, that'll drop. work. Yep, that worked. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How about just being honest and saying that I've been playing fantasy football since 1994 when scoring your team meant waiting for the USA Today's official box scores to come out on Monday morning, and in those 20 years, no other source has helped me withstand victories more than the fantasy footballers. Well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the review. Brian, we can Brian in all caps. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This one comes in from Brian! <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. That thank was impressive <laughs> and terrifying all at once. Yeah, well, you know what else can be terrifying, Andy? We want to thank our... Razor burn? <laughs> Razor burn can be very Oof. terrifying. And we want to give a big thank you to Harry's. Harry's.com has saved my neck personally and Andy's <laughs> as well. It's true. From Razor burn. Their blades are simply put, they're the best. They're the best blades I've ever used in my life. And the cool thing about their blades is they don't also cause a burn in your wallet why pay 32 dollars for an eight pack of blades it's half the price at harry's and with harry's you get a better shave it respects your skin and your face and your legs i know my wife has used them on her legs she said why'd you point at me when you said that well you know i know you probably shave your legs i i, I have no no knowledge on this but uh here's what you do <laughs> Harry's has an amazing starter set. If you haven't, if you have a razor in your house, you got to get it. It's fifteen dollars. You get a razor, which is a nice handle, by the way, a moisturizing shave cream, which is fantastic, and three blades. It's free shipping, and if you use our promo code Footballers, you get five dollars off for your first order. So it's ten bucks. If you have a a, a, a need to shave, go to Harry's.com. Harry's will give you that $5 off with the coupon code FOOTBALLERS. That's harrys.com. Start shaving better today. Yeah, and many of you, the Foot Clan, have uh, have grabbed that deal and have testified to its greatness on Twitter. So we appreciate that. We love Harry's. I also want to thank one of our big-time favorite sponsors, the Sports Manias app. You heard me talk about it at the beginning of the show. This is the game changer for your pocket. Because this gets you connected with exactly what you need to do. You can do customized feeds for your players, get the edge over your league mates, and always know what's going on at a moment's notice. Listen, we'd love to broadcast this show 24 hours a day, but we just plain can't, right? Yeah, I would die. Okay. All right, that's good. I, I mean, I have to take time out to shave my legs. So get the Sports Manias app. You get easy access to content in real time. You heard me say at the beginning, they just added a bunch of uh, smack talk fantasy football emojis to their app and actually i saw an update today they added more and so they're just constantly updating the app and there's more things in there it's really fun to uh you know insult jason on his lack of a superstar via emoji it's there's, just nice there's streams that you sign up for you can import your team from you know any of the major leagues at all import your team and your streams that show up they are well defined the sources well that they curated use. yes the that's word. kind of the, the word i'm looking for it really is a game-changing app all right, so get the free Sports Manias app today, the easiest, fastest, and most complete way to dominate your fantasy league and stay informed with all of your teams. We'll tweet that out today so you have a, an easy way to grab it as well. So let's get into the fantasy forecast for week number eight. Fantasy forecast. All right, guys, this is it, right? The Dolphins, their trip to the Super Bowl is punched. With Dan Campbell, and it's happening tonight, right? They win the game. Oh, uh, they, I think they run the table, right? What What's funny about you saying that is, in my head, I literally saw Dan Campbell punching something <laughs> instead of a a hole punch, as I'm sure you were alluding to. Oh yeah, punching their ticket. You saw him. Yeah, I, I saw Dan Campbell punching the Super Bowl in so, its super face. Here's one of the things that we have to realize with Miami. Uh, Miami, and I know this isn't specifically about this game, but with that question of are they for real? in this change with the new head coach, or was it two easy matchups? Here's what I can tell you. They go from New England to Buffalo to Philly to Dallas with Tony Romo to the New York Jets. I mean, their their schedule the rest of the way is not good. So I think that in a couple of weeks, we're going to be looking back and saying that it was a two-week mirage. 
It's probably going to be in between. I think they're a decent team. They have a lot of talent, which was why everyone was frustrated with them not using Lamar Miller, with them not having a, a balanced game plan and with their defense kind of stinking. Uh, yeah, I, I was completely joking. I think they get crushed tonight by the Patriots. Really? I yeah. think it's close. Okay. Well, Ve- Vegas has the line at eight. We'll see what happens. Um, that's, you know, reasonable for them to, to put up a good performance. We'll see what they have in store. But let's talk fantasy, guys. Are you starting Ryan Tannehill tonight? Uh, yeah. Is he I in would. your top 12 this week? Uh, in my top 12? I think I'd... he was 13 for me. I I so that... right on the cusp, Jason. Why Why can't he go out and have a game like last week? Well, because he's not playing or... people that can't tackle uh, like he did last week. Last week, do you want to know how many passes uh, that he threw uh, over 10 yards? How many? Three. Well, the that... whole entire game. O- over 20 yards, zero. That I might mean... be why he was like 18 for 19. Yeah, yeah, it's it's easy to have that. And and yet he had a ton of super long, I think like all of his touchdowns were like 40-yard touchdowns. All right. Last week, fantasy owners got burned when Lewis was declared out and LeGarrette Blunt got the start and people started him and he went three for negative three and completely goose-egged. Do you start LeGarrette Blunt tonight? Do you, do you take a chance on that just plain being an anomaly and a game flow issue yeah. and the fact that Jets are a really good defense? Would you throw Blunt out there if Lewis was inactive or are you waiting on Blunt? I'm fine uh, throwing Lewis out there as a flex. Well, not Lewis. Or, I'm uh, talking Blunt, about Blunt. Blunt. I'm fine throwing Blunt out there as a flex. I see him being in that you know borderline RB two, low Dolph- end RB two. Dolphins are thirtieth against the run. Well, that's changed. I mean, you you see the last two weeks, sure, and sure. that's the question. But what you saw against the Jets was was that Bill Belichick didn't want to run against the Jets, and he knew he didn't have to run against the Jets because he can pretty much run through the air. So, <laughs> well, no, I'm saying what the running. No, I know. It, Did I you know what say, you meant, but it's you could run through the air. Bill Belichick <laughs> like on can a hover run ball? through the air. Is amazing. He's so wispy. All righty, we need. We're gonna need to Photoshop that. Someone verify this. Uh, but but he's he's able to use the running game in the passing game and those quick. The quick screens. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, we what do. you mean is that they kind of accomplish yes. part of their running game through the short passing game. Exactly. And that works better against the Jets. But he's going to be able to run, I believe, on the Dolphins. All right. So LeGarrette Blount is fine as a flex. Gun to your head. You have to start one of these two guys. Who do you start? Danny Amendola or Brandon LaFell? LaFell. Brandon LaFell. So why do you both say it so demonstratively when Amendola was eight for six or eighty six and a touchdown last week and LaFell had four drops? Because to me, Amendola was the running game. Like like Jason said, they ran through the air uh, with the greatest of ease, and that would be damn Danny and Amand- blah 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 blah. Danny Amendola. That's a tough name to say, fellas. It, uh, yeah. it is today. Uh, <laughs> it, it, right. So that was his uh, that was his role last week. Brandon LaFell was still getting a ton of targets he was not doing very much besides knocking them to the ground but the team ha- came out in support of him even Tom Brady said you know he gave him a, a pass he said it's his first game back he hasn't been doing a ton right now what, what is the laughing for he, I, I would love it if he gave me a pass Tom Brady like, Tom Brady gives passes <laughs> Give, for a living yeah I guess he gave him a pass on dropping the passes yeah uh so I still like LaFell um Okay, so let me ask you, Brandon LaFell or Marvin Jones this week? La- LaFell. Brandon LaFell or Willie Sneed this week? I am looking at that, at that exact same dilemma. I don't know if you were looking at my roster. No, but, but uh, they're back-to-back on our consensus, so I'm I just would, asking. I would say the overwhelming majority think are going with Sneed, but uh, as of now, I am playing Brandon LaFell. I Last one, to- Brandon LaFell or T.Y. Hilton on Monday night? Oh, definitely Brandon LaFell. Wow, that that's to me a hundred percent because of Josh Norman. I don't. That's, I think that's fair. Water bet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What re, water bet between LaFell, LaFell and Hilton? And T.Y. Hilton. Hilton. Oh man, doesn't what a sound so good. Bet. Doesn't sound so good when you say it out loud, does it? But you put that. You put that down. <laughs> water bet. Sometimes I make water bets. I feel real good about right away. Josh uh, Norman, if you are listening, get. Get your game on. Yeah, all right. Let's move on. Lions going into Arrowhead facing the Chiefs. This is our opportunity to see what has changed in the Lions offense. That being said, the Chiefs are are fairly heavy favorites at home. You know, the Chiefs are 11th against the running game. So if we're expecting to see that the, you know, the Lions somehow figure that out, I don't know if this is the week to count on that. I don't think we're going to see a renovated you know, Abdullah Bell combination that's running all over 
the Chiefs. You know what I'm expecting to see is a lot of Megatron and a lot of Golden Tate. Uh, the uh, what's they've been Jim, neg- neglected. Jim Bob Cooter. <laughs> I love it. That is a, Jim Bob Cooter. That's the the new OC up in Detroit, rocking one of the best football names of all time. <laughs> yeah, wow, that Jim is Bob legendary. Cooter. I at this point, I just want him to become like the greatest coach in the history of the <laughs> yes. NFL, so movies can be made about yeah. Jim Bob. Jim Cooter. Bob Cooter. Wow. Well, I look the Lombardi was was not getting the ball to his playmakers. Uh, he was not drawing up great schematic things and they sure they were getting targets golden tate is one of the most heavily targeted wide receivers in the league at right now but he's not near the top in the other statistical categories because they're just they're they were not strong plays where just get the ball in his hands and for for calvin johnson don't make him run a double move or what every single time have these really long drawn out routes that he needs to to play where the offensive line clearly cannot block uh, long enough for Stafford to to let that route develop. Just let him run about ten yards and throw the ball up to him. All right. I mean, so let me give you some numbers here in this game, uh, and you tell me who who this is. Um, through five games starting, this is a half point PPR. Uh, thirteen fantasy points, thirteen fantasy points, eight fantasy points, then three, and then seventeen. Hmm. Who and, do you think that is? Someone in this game. Correct. Oh. I Th- that is that is Eric is that Ebron? Ebron. Yeah, that is Eric Ebron. Wow. Would you start Eric Ebron over Travis Kelsey in this game? No, no. Okay, uh, and that's just the the matchup where the Lions have been very generous to the tight end, where the Chiefs have played the tight end pretty well. We all agree Ebron should be owned. Yeah, in I, all leagues. It, would I start Ebron this week? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the Chiefs are a bad matchup for tight ends, but they're great for wide receivers, which is. Uh, I think we've seen on a couple of teams when you've got great coverage on your wide receivers, the tight end can benefit and vice versa. When you've got bad coverage from your corners on the wide receivers, the tight ends aren't used as much because they're not needed. And this is one of those matchups. All right. Last piece of the puzzle here in this game. Chan- Chark Andrick West seems to be uh, the guy they committed to him last week. He had a very good game. In fact, a lot of people ask questions about him. I'm, I'm fairly high on him the rest of season, just as a kind of like a, probably in that 12 to 15 range week to week, um, you know, based on matchups. That being said, on the other side of the ball, you've got um, Joyk Bell practicing in full. Amir Abdullah has had his ups and downs, had a pretty okay game last game. And then Theo Riddick seeing all the snaps. So put those three real quick in order of who you'd start in a half-point PPR league. West or half-point PPR? No, not West. I'm sorry. Just the, just oh, the, just Lions, the Lions guys. Just the Lions. Riddick, Abdullah, Joyk Bell. I'm going Abdullah, Joyk Bell, Riddick. Wow. You think okay. Riddick's role I'm, will just I'm gonna, disappear? I'm going to go Riddick, uh, number one, Abdullah, and then Bell. Uh, I think Riddick's role is going to decrease as they become more balanced and look to – I'll tell you what. They get the ball to Golden Tate more, and Riddick won't catch as many passes. That'll be nice. Uh, That'll be nice. Well, you, you don't no, like Riddick? No, no, I like Riddick. I, I guess I meant it. <laughs> I meant what you said, which is Golden Tate led the league in – in yards, yards after, after the catch, catch last year, so you got to get him the catch part of that. He's also been a fantastic catch rate guy, and this year he's fifty yeah. five percent. So, so he's also led the league in smugness. I don't know if you guys are well have for for years as well as hail mary touchdowns um, <laughs> that aren't really touchdowns. <laughs> uh, by the way, we got to move on to this next game: the Chargers at the Ravens. I want to say this for a second though the the purpose of this segment on the show is not to exhaustively talk about every player and every team. If we did that, this you know, we'd, we'd have to start on Monday and end on Friday. And so sometimes we get emails and someone's like, ah, oh, you for, you know, you didn't mention, uh, you know, you didn't talk about Alec, Alex Smith a lot in this game. You know, we have our rankings up on the website. You can kind of see where we have guys slotted in. We're trying to hit some of the main points to focus on here. We know people are starting Travis Kelsey if they have them, that type of thing. So just some context for the discussions. Let's go Chargers going into Baltimore. The Ravens are having a bad season. That being said, the Chargers looked really, really bad last game. Minus the fantasy garbage time uh, king. That is, <laughs> that is Philip Rivers. Um, kind of makes him, you know, kind of situation proof, though, when that happens. And he has guys to dump it off to like Woodhead. All right, so let's talk about this game. Though. You're starting Rivers, I assume, without hesitation. Yes. So 
what do we think about the uh, running back situation in San Diego from a fantasy perspective? Jason, do you have any thoughts on, on who you'd start and what your expectations are? From San Francisco, you're starting Woodhead. Uh, uh, San Diego. Or San Diego, you're, you're, you're starting Woodhead and you're starting nobody else. I, I don't have the confidence right now to put Melvin Gordon in my lineup not knowing how much they're going to allow him to run. I, he could have a great game, but I don't trust it right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with Woodhead alone. I'm st- I'm still fine flexing Gordon out. I don't know if he would be uh, my number two choice for running back, but I agree with Jason on on Woodhead. Where uh, and, and the Ravens, when you look at game flow for the Ravens, their record horrific, but they've been in every single game where they are just blowing things at the end. Uh, maybe it takes a miracle like the game against Arizona, but they were right into it. I mean, you instead if if that wasn't wasn't an interception in the end zone that Flacco threw, I, I feel like the Ravens probably win that game. Just momentum had completely swung uh, to Baltimore's favor. Uh, but it's true. But uh, you're looking to, like, Steve Smith is completely startable in this matchup uh, where the Chargers had been great uh, in giving up points, or holding away points, I should say, from the wide receiver. And then they sent in the car, and Derek Carr lit them up with uh, just a barrage of touchdowns to Cooper and Crabtree. So I I believe in Steve Smith in this matchup. I'm not going to let the Chargers scare me away from Smith. All right, l- let's talk about Keenan Allen for a second. He's been very good this year. Obviously, 15 catches this week. Okay, that's the thought. Not even joking. So rest of season. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, rest of season, who would you rather have on your roster, Keenan Allen or T.Y. Hilton? Keenan, Keenan Allen. Uh, I would rather have T.Y. Hilton. Really? Okay. Yeah, I I think what what we've seen is is Keenan Allen is great. His usage has been great. But when is the last time that Antonio Gates and Stevie Johnson have been together on the field with Keenan Allen? Do you know? I don't uh, think never. it's happened yet. Never. And so my point is, Stevie Johnson's back, and we're still got another week or two. But the season still has several more weeks left. When they all get together, I don't think the targets are going to hold. And I think that their running game can't do anything but get better. So that that's why I like both guys. I'm not saying I wouldn't want Keenan Allen on my team. I can agree that there's really the only thing the running game can do is get better, but I don't expect it to get better. I expect that they they will have to run through the air with their <laughs> Patriot compadres, and that's Keenan Allen's job. Keenan Allen gets passes that like the average depth is basically five yards or so. I mean, it's very very low uh, for a for a pass through the air. And it, but Keenan Allen is just, he's been sensational. Uh, there was worry about his hip, you know, because he had injured it a couple weeks ago. And he answered that with a monster game. And I, I love Keenan Allen. I think he's just so safe where T.Y. Hilton was uh, saved by ridiculous defensive you know, uh, buffoonery. What, well, one thing I'll say is that uh, I'll, get, I'll let you respond since that was your discussion uh, with him. But all I, all I was going to say is it's very ironic that I picked T.Y. over Allen rest of season. I'm almost like discounting this week because this week I've got Keenan Allen, my number three, and T.Y. Hilton, my number like 43. Um, I, this debate discussion changes a little bit for me. At PPR leagues, I like Keenan Allen a little bit better. Um, Hilton, I like a little bit more in standard leagues, or it's close. You know, Hilton has twice the amount of red zone targets than Keenan Allen does this year. And so he kind of is more boom and bust, and that's why I would think that. Last piece I want to talk about here is if Gates is out, Ladarius Green, is he a start? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Cardinals go into Cleveland. They face the Browns. The Browns are five-point underdogs at home. Uh, I have a start of the week that is in this game, so we'll get to that a little bit later. And I think it would have been both of your guys' starts of the week had I not beat you to the punch. 100%. <laughs> he is the clear-cut uh, start of the week. Okay, so we think that um, Josh McCown should be playing in this game. Is we that believe correct? All, all information indicates McCown. Yes, who you know, once played as the Cardinals quarterback back when I was like 12 years old. So he's continue. It is kind of a revenge game. I was waiting for the, yeah, re- the revenge, the revenge game narrative. <laughs> All I right. Think Josh McCown would have to take revenge on half the league. So we, we were at the Cardinal game last week. We saw the running back rotation. It's clearly Chris Johnson's job right now. He's a start Ellington and David Johnson. Is it flip a coin? Cause uh, last week you would have gotten more points if you started Ellington. But David Johnson seemed to be on the field a little bit more. Yeah, David Johnson's getting more snaps and just guessing on, or uh, I should say hoping for a touchdown. I'm rolling with David Johnson. Yeah, passing down packages. We saw 
a lot of times those two come in together. It was like, hey, this is going to be a clear passing down third and long or, or something like that. Let's send in Ellington and David Johnson, roll them out. So hard, really hard to have any kind of predictability there. There has never been a game. Actually, this set the NFL record, I just decided, uh, <laughs> for the highest quantity of, of running backs named Johnson. <laughs> because there is Chris Johnson, David Johnson, and Duke Johnson all featured in this game. Duke Johnson has not been talked about enough because he's actually true. been very, very – I think he's on pace for in the 70s reception-wise. And so in a PBR league, he's been actually fairly consistent. If and Mc to me, he's the guy to start, obviously, in Cleveland. If McCown is playing this week, I think Duke Johnson takes an even higher bump because of the shoulder problem. Are you going to be throwing it long? Or are you going to be throwing it short? You're going to be throwing those dump offs to the running back. We saw that with Drew Brees. He came back and threw like 700 passes. You know, the week that he got back from that shoulder injury to his running backs. So uh, Duke Johnson's a, a mighty fine player. Arizona is among the bottom of uh, defenses, giving up passes to the running back. So I like Duke Johnson. Now, uh, one thing to note for players with wide receivers in Arizona is I do not think that John Brown will be playing this week. I think John Brown will be out, and so that is a bit of a, you know, people with Fitzgerald are playing him, but people with Michael Floyd might be on the cusp of do I start him, do I not? If if John Brown is out, Michael Floyd is a very, very safe start, in my opinion, in this game. Much like we liked Robert Woods last week, you know, Michael Floyd's going to be the guy on the field pretty much every snap if John Brown's off the field. I completely agree. I want to get your guys' opinion on Jermaine Gresham. Uh, Arizona is not known in the Bruce Arians system. They are not known for using the tight end. Jermaine Gresham was a huge part of the game uh, last week against the Ravens, including a uh, a pretty big pass that got dropped on a, on a big hit. So you add that in, I think you would add 100-plus yards. So what do you guys feel about Gresham? Was that a one-week wonder, or will they actually be including a tight end? I, I lean much more on the one-week wonder side simply because of game planning and the fact we saw this from Fells in week one where he scored a touchdown and was involved. And so I'd, I'd need to see it over multiple weeks myself. I expect him to be more and more involved in the game plan, but not enough to make an impact. I, I, I statted him thinking he was going to be in the game plan more, and he came out as my number 16 tight end. So it's not really relevant. And, and maximum barnage. Maximum well, th barnage. This will be a test for him. The Cardinals are actually giving up the least amount of points against tight ends. The barn burner. I actually am. The barnyard dog. <laughs> There's no end <laughs> to his nicknames. Uh, I want to throw just a smidgen of cold water on Barnage this week. And I think I did this before this year, and he proved me very wrong. So He's I, proved everybody wrong. I will have an apology for you, uh, barnyard, barn burning, maximum barnage, if – you have a great week, but I think with the shoulder injury and Arizona's defense against the tight end, it's not a good week for maximum Barnage. How much of the doubt about Barnage comes from the fact his name is Gary Barnage? Uh, you, you think if his name least, was like Johnny Fly, like we would all be over him? <laughs> if his name was uh, Max Williams with two X's? Yeah, or like Billy right. Sticky Hands. Well, that would help, too. That'd be real good. But, yeah, I agree. There's at least 30% of my doubt comes because his name is Gary. Another 20% because he caught a touchdown pass with his, uh, with his butt cheeks. With his butt cheeks. <laughs> All right. Moving on, <laughs> naturally, to the next. <laughs> speaking of butt cheeks. Yeah, speaking uh, oh, great. Thank you for giving. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I'm trying so desperately. Uh, Jay Cutler. No, uh, the Vikings are going to Chicago. Um, where Jay Cuddy's mom is on blast and <laughs> Jay, well, wow, the feedback tells me he, she is, uh, Bridgewater Cutler face off in this one. It's pretty much a, a pick em game in terms of the Vegas numbers. So who do we think comes out on top? What are the matchups you like in this game from a fantasy football perspective? The bears are actually very good against the pass. The Vikings come in right in the middle of the pack to the upper side of the pack and defense 11th against the pass 13th against the run. The Bears are finally getting healthy, and they're at home with a team that they haven't really had for most of the year. I, I, I like the Bears in this one to surprise, surprise with offensive efficiency. Jay Cutler has been very good this year. Matt Forte has been awesome. Alshon Jeffrey is a beast. Martellus Bennett should have a good game because Minnesota has quite a porous tight end defense. 
So I think that the offense is going to be a lot for the Vikings to handle this week, and that's a little bit surprising to me because the Bears haven't necessarily been that great, but they also haven't been healthy. And during this time of injury, we see uh, Marquise Wilson also coming on into his own, and it, it reminds me a little bit of what happened, a micro, micro little bit of what's happened uh, with the Bengals where they had these injuries, you know, last year and other guys kind of stepped up and now their starters came back and they've just got a better team to throw the ball to. So, uh, you know, I, I like Jay Cutler in this. I like pretty much all of, uh, you know, I like Jay Cutler. Obviously, I like Forte, love Alshon Jeffrey, uh, but I also like uh, Bennett. So should be should be a good game. For so me. you like th you like all the Bears? I do. I like that's the Bears what you just game. said. You'd start them all. <laughs> I if you heard, Marquise if you heard Wilson. some more audio feedback, that was the the actual mixer's fine. That was Jim Tomsula. <laughs> oh, that was Jim Tomsula came in. <laughs> All right, um, Stefan Diggs. Does he continue this week? I I didn't. I've been telling people to start him. <laughs> I, I uh, when I was going through the the stat and guys out. I thought I was being conservative on him, and he ended up very high in my rankings. I've how high? Uh, he was basically like a, a very high-end wide receiver, too. Um, you want to know why you start him? Jason has the tip. Why do you start Stephen Diggs this week? Because you stay in the fire. You stay in the flames. Stay in the flames. Stay you the ruined flames. your own awesome <laughs> I, quote you by saying stay in the fire. You stay in the flames. You we stay in the flames. I have him ranked fire. 21, and you have him 19, so we're pretty and much back to I him. think that the – Where do I have him? Uh, you do not have your <laughs> rankings done. Uh, the, what really helps Diggs out – this week is again Adrian Peterson has he has a a taste and a taste for bear and he he needs to devour bears. Does he play good bear against the bears? Flesh. And he I think last time he played against the bears was when he rattled off uh, over 200 yards, which I'm told from sources is a halfway decent game. So I I look for Adrian Peterson to have success against the bears. The Bengals. Face the Steelers. There's oh. not even a line right now because we don't this know if Big is, Ben's oh. playing. This is the game that I am very excited for. Me stinking too. I am very so excited. excited. I can't wait to watch this game. I I, I think there's going to be 100 points scored. That's really? my guess. <laughs> I'm going to put the over under at 72. <laughs> I will say this. I, I, I think the best mentality in fantasy football this week with this game is to ignore your matchup thoughts, concerns, mindset about the Bengals defense or anything like that. The Bengals D has not been very special. They're going to Pittsburgh. Big Ben will be back. They got weapons through the nose. I got no reason to be concerned about the matchup. And that being the case, you got fantasy relevance from both quarterbacks, Hill, Bernard, Bell, and then Green, Jones. Would you start Marvin Jones this week? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because I might have to if Deion Lewis is out in one of my leagues. Uh, and a guy who may or may not surprise you that I I am returning my love for him, Mr. Jeremy Hill. I, I know that the Steelers are technically ranked high against uh, running. Technically. Well, it's because. Here, mathematically. Ma yeah, thank you. Mathematically ranked high, but they're, just, they're, they're not playing any any semblance of spectacular running games. And when they faced a great running game like Baltimore, gave up 182 yards. Last week against Kansas City and Charmander West, put uh, they gave up over 125 yards on the ground. So I I like Jeremy Hill to get things figured out in the bye week, uh, to return to his level of being a great running back. So you got to start one. You got both on your team, and then only one flex spot. Oof. Who do you start, Geo or Jeremy Hill? As of now, it's still Geo, but I mm. believe I I have them back to back in my rankings. I think they both have a success. I was today. hoping you'd go on a limb there. And start Hill over Geo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Huh. I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. Yeah, I just I, I think this now is the time we I've uh, I'm sticking with my guns of I I said after the bye week Jeremy Hill could emerge and be great so I'm sticking with it. All righty. Um. So not a lot of complications in terms of start sit in this game. I think it'll be a, a kind of a fantasy bonanza of sorts, and and I'm excited. It's a divisional game. Um. You know, I guess there's some credit uh, credence to the fact that it could be more defensive than we think because of that, but I think it's just going to be a great game. I really hope. It, we can't forget the Bengals are coming off of a bye, and that always favors a good defense, and so I really hope they don't come out 
and have a great game plan for Ben Roethlisberger coming back off of an injury, that would stink because I want – I don't know if you can stop those guys. No, that's the whole – You cannot. Yeah. Big Ben is just – I mean, this could be the week that we see more Martavis and it puts him in that kind of top 12 discussion at wide receiver. And Antonio Brown should be back. you mentioned Martavis Bryant. Why is that? For later. Really? That's right. Okay. Oh, for later. I got you. Wink, wink. Wink, (laughs) wink. Nudge, (laughs) nudge. All right. Last matchup we're going to go through today before we get to our starts of the week. Starts of the week. Hint, hint. (laughs) Titans, Texans has been canceled. (laughs) I was going to say the the, uh, the yin and yang of the Bengals Steelers. So how excited I am for that. (laughs) Right, right. I am the complete opposite. Could this be, you know how you have like the, uh, the like opening band? (laughs) <laughs> that or the opening comic that comes out right before the main event. Can we just play Titans Texans one quarter right before the main event of Bengals Steelers and just be done with it? The the way that I am watching this game, the only way that I'm going to be, be able to is I will have a full on clockwork orange headset with the the prongs prying my eyes open. Well, that's as I the beg kind them, of sacrifice you make as an I analyst. I beg them to stop, and they they continue the eye drops, and I'm, nah, no, make it stop. The biggest contrast from the two games is the fact that you almost start no one in this game, and so uh, you know who are you rolling out there? You know Ryan Mallett is not one of those guys that you're rolling out there. <laughs> no, no, he might. Uh, he's probably not going to make the trip. <laughs> Uh, cause he's been cut. All right. Marcus Mariota might start. Is there a chance you'd start Mariota based on what you've seen from the Houston defense? Yep. I, st- I'm, I, my stream is the Tennessee quarterback okay. and I still feel strongly st- that they will be great. Based, er, they will be a very competent quarterback. Based on the, the Houston defense, it looks like they've given up. I mean, they, they really do look like a team that is just lost heart. They look like the dolphins before they fired Philbin. Like they just don't care. Well, good news for them. J.J. <laughs> Watt sat out today. Oh, yeah. very nice. And so did you know who else did? Jadavian Clowney. So I'm actually okay. <laughs> I, are you serious? Yeah, but he's he's sick. He's still expected to play. Wow. Um, Number I, the quarterback I, might be coming to Houston because of in that the draft. I don't mind taking a shot on Kendall Wright uh, just um, to yeah. break some tackles. Break. break I think some Delaney Walker is the best start of the game. Noodle arm. Uh, I really I, I'm do. gonna go ahead and say DeAndre Hopkins. I'd rather start. Okay, over Delaney okay, Walker, okay. But. On that side, of, on that, <laughs> on that side of the Bold ball. Move. Bold, Bold move. Bold move, Cotton. <laughs> All right. Is there any chance you uh, stay in the Flames or other Flames for Nate Washington? Not yet, huh? No, that's just kindling. Yeah, that's it's warm. Th- that's getting that's warming up my my water for my mac and cheese. <laughs> it's not ready. It's not ready. All right. The uh, I, that's all we need to say about that game. I agree. Are you starting Arian Foster? Oh, don't say Oh, that. I will say this. I actually think <laughs> Alfred Blue and Antonio Andrews have playable games. <laughs> just a moment of silence. Where we would have talked about this game before, I'd like to just be completely silent for Antonio. I mean, for Arian right. Foster. All right. Let's go ahead and get into them. The starts of the week. Starts of the week. Every week we prepare docs for the show, you know, that we reference during the show to, to keep us on course. You know, we like to not get too sidetracked, get, cover all of our bases, get every bit of information to you. And so there is a section of our doc for the starts of the week, and we go in individually. We identify the guys that we think we should start. And we're not allowed to pick the same a guy, guy that someone else has picked for these. So it's kind of a race every week is my point to get into the doc and, uh, you know, I, I put I got in first. I put mine in, and then I sent him a note and say, "Don't forget your starts of the yeah. week. Don't forget your starts of the week." So I'll kick it off then with uh, with let's the start. running back. Let's start sure. with the running back because of that. We'll go running backs, and my start of the week is <laughs> it's, it's Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson of the Arizona Cardinals at Cleveland, and they are thirtieth against the run. And Chris Johnson, even in spite of his rollover sixty yard, you know, go, uh, you know, run last week. Jaunt is the word I was looking for. <laughs> it was a jaunt. Uh, I like Chris Johnson a ton this week. I know you guys do as well, so I, we don't have to him. linger there I, too much. I've got him as a, as a top 12 back and really like him. He was the clear start of the week that I wanted to pick. And I, when I wanted to pick nobody else, I still almost picked him because I really like that pick, Andy. Instead, because he was taken, I actually have a little bit of faith. Yeah. I'm talking as an RB2. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying you're going to get the bee's knees. But in Darren McFadden against, yes, the Seattle 
Seahawks. Good luck. Uh, here's here's why. I think his baseline is very high. He's going to get another. Mr. McFadden. I have for two yards. Yeah. So if he runs for, you know, a good 2.9 yards of carry, as I expect him to be near. He'll get enough usage as they're committed to the run. I'm he's totally going fine to with him as a guy. two this week. And he's also, when the game gets out of hand, he's going to catch the ball. Let me, so let me say something. If you're a half point or a full point, I like him. You, you need to be more like on board with your start of the week. I mean, you need to be confident about that. I am. I think he's going to be an RB2. I'm saying that people aren't confident in him because of the Seattle defense. Okay. All right. Mike, who is your running back start of the week? My running back start of the week because he leveled up last yes, he did. week. He he came out and he was... Evolved. Evo- evolved. Thank you. Yeah. He was he came out and he was a Charmander, and now he is a Charizard. Okay. And, and that that's is... And Kendrick West, the running back of the Kansas City Chiefs. He was in for 87 and a half percent of the snaps goal line carry and so clearly kansas city was not lying they were not bluffing about this when they said that west will be the guy he put up 110 and one on what was a supposed to be a very strong pittsburgh Steelers running defense the lions are very porous against the run and i just i think it's a great matchup for uh for west to continue on all right why don't you go ahead and give us your quarterback start of the week my quarterback star of the week, I'm giving him one more chance. One more chance for Matt Ryan because I think the matchup is just too tasty. They're going up against Tampa Bay. Uh, and Tampa Bay, last week, we saw him give up three touchdowns to Washington, four to Jacksonville the previous game. I think that the the Falcons, moving forward, will need to refine that groove they had going in the passing game. I know that they're, they're having great success right now with Devonta Freeman, but... I would hope that the Falcons see that or that Freeman can't sustain that kind of a workload. You can't have him touching the ball 25 to 30 times a game with that frame. Maybe you can, but in my personal opinion, just watching what happens to other running backs, you can't do that. So they need to get uh, Matt Ryan back on track. Yeah, Julio Jones might catch five touchdowns this week. Uh, That'll for, work. For my quarterback, uh, I mentioned him in passing earlier. Jay Cutler is my start of the week. He's at home. He's got his tools back that he hasn't had for a while, and I think he's got a decent matchup. So uh, I am fine playing Jay Cutler this week, and he's available. He was also my stream of the week because he's available Ooh, double in, down. in almost all leagues. So get him and play him. I'm taking Matt Stafford at the Kansas City uh, secondary. Yeah. yeah, because the Kansas City secondary they they've stunk against the pass. I'm going to buy into the fact the new offense just plain has to be better than the old offense. It's just a, you know, the a, JBC. A wa- you know, when the water's all the way out of the glass, you it's either out of the glass or it fills, and so it's got to get a little bit better. Uh, so I, I'm I'm okay going Stafford in this game. We talked about Tate and Calvin maybe getting. Uh, some more targets this week down the field as well. They're going to focus on the downfield passing game. So my wide receiver start of the week is actually Tavon Austin. It I'm gonna, interesting. I went down the line a little bit, okay? And so this is your flex play. I'm okay flexing him. At home against San Francisco. San Francisco is 30th against the wide receiver position. Gurley is opening things up for that game, and Austin has actually strung together enough semi-consistent games of late to give me a, you know, some confidence in him. This is approaching Mike Ditka levels with that one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so Tavon Austin is my uh, start of the week. I'd be okay flexing him this week. If you want uh, a confident uh, Jason start of the week, well, you got it here. I am very confident in this start of the week, which is Dante Moncrief yeah. against yeah. Carolina. Carolina's great pasty. Hey, what? <laughs> but Jason... Josh, oh, is that the voice of public opinion? <laughs> that was. The what voice- does the voice of public opinion say about your uh, your pick of Moncrief? They say, but he's going up against Carolina's the third best pass defense. And I would say, that's a new voice, public opinion. <laughs> However, public opinion, what you have to look at is Josh Norman is incredible when it comes to covering wide receiver ones, which is why I've got T.Y. Hilton as like my 40-something wide receiver. But because of that... You have a great number two here that's going to be able and going to need to catch passes. If you look at the games that Carolina has played, they have given up only two big games the whole year. 
One was week one to Alan Hearns, not Alan Robinson. And one was week four to Vincent Jackson, not Mike Evans. Gigantic game. So I expect Moncrief to have a good game here. If you've got him, you're probably him and Hahn because of yeah. that Carolina D. Put him in. That's great. Uh, I'm going with Martavis Bryant. Uh, I, Big Ben is back. Yes, it's a it's a tough defensive matchup against Cincinnati, but there's just there's just too much. I think the Steelers have too many weapons, and Antonio Brown has got to. I don't think there's a happier person in the United States of America than Antonio Brown right now. Saying my quarterback is back. I'm finally going to be an elite wide receiver again. And you 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 have to defend Antonio Brown. You have to defend Le'Veon Bell. And I think this just opens things up for Martavis Bryant. And he does what he does. He does alien things with the football. I love Bryant. All right. So that leaves us with the tight end position. Mike, kick us off. My tight end. I'm going with Ladarius Green. Uh, Phillip Rivers has no choice right now. None whatsoever but to throw the ball. I think Antonio Gates will be out. Uh, he's trying to find that MCL that he's so enamored with. And Ladarius Green, if if you look at his numbers, even when Gates was back and they're both tight ends were playing, Green was still giving you very capable tight end weeks. Uh, it's Green is one of those elusive guys that we've been waiting years for him to break out, and it's it's happening right now. People aren't really talking about it. This is the breakout. This is what is happening right now with Ladarius Green. So I love him. Uh, if, assuming Gates is out, if Gates is in, then he's still a good start. But. So my tight end uh, start of the week is a, a a mostly forgotten about man right now, Crockett Gilmore. You could probably get him on your waivers. He started the year strong, got injured, and was dropped and was forgotten about. I think he's got a baseline of 5 for 50 this game going up against a very suspect uh, tight end defense in San Diego. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot to, ke to keep up with Phillip Rivers. And I think he's got – if he's searching for that touchdown, he gets in. I've got him as my number six tight end this week. I'm going to go ahead and stay in the old man flames with Ben Watson. He's been pretty consistent this season. The Giants can't cover the tight end position. And so I think we'll see another kind of, you know, in the same vein of what Jason said with the baseline being fairly high for Watson. He's been targeted a lot. They're actually playing pretty well. The Saints are playing a lot better than they had been. And so I like Watson as kind of the pass catching uh, tight end target there. So Ben Watson, my tight end start of the week, and I that, dig it. that wraps up our starts of the week. Well, you guys got anything else going on? Uh, We've got you know like a minute left before the show's got in. We got the daily dose tomorrow. Daily dose coming up tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have that. Yeah, let's preview preview tomorrow's show. So we got the daily dose. We the got rest the rest of the rest of the games, and we got our man Joe Juan. The FF underscore scientist is dropping a hot. Whew. Yeah, it's hot. The one believable set of hot the week. Hot staying in the flames. Yeah, so we've got good stuff for you tomorrow. Be sure to check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, where you can submit your questions directly to us. If you've got an urgent question, we can get back to you quick. Let us know about it. Thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for those iTunes reviews, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and catch you tomorrow. Sound good? Uh, it sounds great to me, guys. I don't know. What do you think about it? Sounds good. I'd Let's love to talk to you guys tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I'd gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter. At the FF Ballers.